Hello, and welcome to Higher Results, where business, workforce, and talent intersect. I'm Melody Reagan, CEO of Ida I Workforce, and your host. And today we're going to be talking about a really important document that we use for employees and employee management, and that is your employee manual. And with me is Diane Windemuller, Principal, I to I Workforce. Thanks for being here today, Thanks Diane. Thanks for having me, Melody. It's Fant- good to be here. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to jump in. And first, I'm just going to start with, for all of you out there, do you even have an employee manual for your company? And Diane, is it something that a company should have? Is it important and why? Yes, absolutely. You should have an employee manual. It's very important for a company to outline their policies and procedures and just give uh, some tangibility to um, how they conduct business as a company and what the expectations are for the employees. You know, when you think about it, um, if you bring a contractor in, this is the way I explain this Mm -hmm. to our employers, when you bring a contractor in, you um, have them sign a contract. But with employees, we don't do that. Now, obviously, if we have IP contracts, et cetera, we do have them sign that. So um, it's not to say that there aren't, but generally employees, they complete an application, we bring them on board, we make sure that we have their I-9s. Well, guess what? The corollary for your employee manual is um, a contract for your contractor. So what you want to do, and it's exactly what Diane says, it kind of um, establishes some of the terms of the relationship that you have with employees. All right, so taking an employee manual, mm-hmm. um, you know, first off, um, what are, well, there, we're going to go through a couple of things. So what should I be covering? What kinds of things should I be covering in an employee manual? Well, I think it's important to just kind of give an introduction to the company and summarize perhaps some of the history of the company. And then you should go into your uh, policies. And that can cover a lot of different things, such as your your payroll, your compensation, your benefits, uh, your expectations on conduct, um, corrective action process, um, all of those different kinds of things. Um, You can kind of pick and choose certain things, but um, it's a good overall summary of of conduct and expectations for your employees. You know what, and don't just think of the employee manual as something for your employees. It also helps whoever it is that you have in a supervisory management position to understand what are the policies. Like how much time should people be getting for vacation? What are company holidays? If I have somebody who I need to put on a performance plan, what is the process under which I should um, put that person under a a Mm -hmm. performance plan? Now, it doesn't necessarily give you every single step, but it definitely produces a guideline. And we're going to go through a couple of these. Um, So when should I give an employee manual to an employee? I think it's really appropriate to give the employee manual and cover it, go over everything in it, in its contents uh, when you're doing your onboarding and new hire orientation. Exactly. It's like right at the beginning, but b- before we just end there, these are living documents. They, you don't just write them once and then they last into per- perpetuity. They should be updated. So how often should an employer be updating their employee manuals? Well, I think it's kind of an ongoing process. Uh, there are a lot of... Um, federal and state and local uh, mandates that come out on an ongoing basis. So I think it's just kind of a work in progress at all times. And you should be updating it pretty frequently, I would say. And then sending out those updates and communicating those updates to your employee workforce so that people understand the, the updates and uh, what what the edits have been. You know what? That's part of the reason we are so lucky that we live in such a digital world mm-hmm. now, don't you think? Um, But it really is a process, and let's demonstrate. I tell employers, please don't let a year go by without at least updating it. But if there are changes in laws, you need to update that throughout the year. And just to demonstrate, so if you have 50 employees, FMLA is going to apply. Under 50 employees, it doesn't, although there are a couple of states that may have specific regulations. And here's one. A couple of years ago, the EEOC changed... um, how they defined maternity and paternity leave. 
Um, historically, there was the ability for an employer to separate between how much time off the mother versus the father received, right? Or you now have two parents in the diversity of our great nation. And guess what? You cannot distinguish um, time off uh, between mother or father. Mm -hmm. You can no longer make that distinction according to the EOC. Now, what you do have is um, the mother who, when she has the baby, is in a place that they do fall under a period of disability. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that disability, paid time off or time off cannot be any different between the two parents. So whatever your company policy is, you need to make sure that you are maintaining equity and what that policy is. So Right. Stay that, up to date and educate yourself and educate your workforce on the changes on a very ongoing basis. The other one is your employee manual becomes important is if all of a sudden you have um, whatever legal action or complaint mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. somebody, it becomes a reference document that you go back to. And here's one of the areas that it actually has been pretty frequently as of late, um, is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. So what should an employer have in, a, in their manual about sexual harassment? Well, you should definitely have outlined your code of conduct and uh, some examples of inappropriate types of behavior according to the law. And then you should also outline uh, reporting procedures if someone feels violated or if they feel like they're being harassed in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. It's important for your manual to outline a reporting procedure for that and um, how, to, how to go about doing that so that people don't feel alone. They, they need to feel supported by the company. So just so you know, quite a few manuals, that's actually one of the first things that they start with. But um, beyond that is there's always this wonderful welcome letter that speaks to the culture of the company. And you should make sure that you have that welcome letter that speaks to um, the culture and the expectations that you have for your workers and the worker engagement. All right, let's talk about this. What all should be included under employee benefits in an employee manual? I think it's good to have an outline of what types of benefits you provide. Perhaps you don't want to go into the specific levels of benefits and the minute details because those change on a regular basis, but you do want to have an overall guideline as far as these are the general benefits that we provide and this is how you apply for your benefits. This is when they're in effect and this is when you are able to make changes. If there's a, a life event, a qualifying life event, we should outline those kinds of things where you can ask for changes in your benefit levels and then when open enrollment occurs as well. Yeah, because benefits change and obviously we all know um, benefits are going to typically change on an annual basis, mm -hmm. but there are changes that can occur out of cycle and you need to update that. Part of also is benefits is you speak to attendance, what are normal work hours. And um, part of it is, and, and technically it is a benefit, if somebody is going to be out because they had a death in the family, you know, and there are some standards typically for funerals. Mm -hmm. And if you have a family member, mm -hmm. um, it's how many days typically? Typically it's about three days, uh, depending on the, the level of relationship that you had to the deceased and the family. Um, some manuals will go as far as outlining which relationships get what level of absence for uh, the funeral and, and bereavement. And by the way, for um, most employees, if it's a friend, that's typically vacation time. So um, it is typically for leave like this, it's typically, it's a relation. So it's somebody that is truly part of your family beyond that. And that's part mm -hmm. of the clarity that people mm -hmm. have because um, what does constitute funeral um, leave, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So that's part of the reason that we outline it. The other one that it does speak to is in terms of not just benefits, but um, jury duty mm -hmm. is typically covered. If somebody is in active duty and mm -hmm. military exactly. and um, how the company honors that, right? Mm -hmm. How long? And there are laws that surround that as to how long you need to keep exactly. those jobs um, open. And, and time off for voting. Exactly. And mm -hmm. time off for voting are some of the standards. Another thing that gets covered in employee manuals are its pay. Mm -hmm. You know, and depending on what you have between exempt and non-exempt, what constitutes over time, what constitutes being on call if you have on-call positions, right? 
Exactly. It's all very important to outline some of those details in your employee manual so that people know where to go, what to reference, and what and meet their expectations as far as the details of compensation. If you have an issue with your compensation or a question about it, uh, you should point out in the manual who to go to, who to contact if you have a compensation analyst or a department. Make sure that you have those contact names in your employee handbook. Fantastic. We're going to add another one to this, drug testing. Some employers actually do drug tests. Um, you know, they can do random, etc., and they include this in their employee manual as well, just so for those who know. Uh, other things that get included in the employee manual are policies around technology. Um, mm -hmm. What is the use of computers, phones, personal versus business for someone? What a company will pay for and what a company won't pay for with regard yeah. to telecommunications. Exactly. And also I want to add to that uh, privacy issues too. If you're on uh, mm -hmm. social media, if you're using the email company email site, those are things that the company can access and, and can, um, you know, cover and, and read if, if needed, if it's related to the company. So you always want to be aware yeah. of that. By the way, other things um, that get covered, attire, you already mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Don't take that for granted. I, I can't even tell you some of the funny stories that we've run into where employees have shown up where their dress hasn't necessarily mm -hmm. been as appropriate. And um, you don't have to go down to ad infinitum, but you can let them know, are you a, do you require business attire? Are you um, business casual? Are you just fully mm -hmm. casual? Mm -hmm. Is it that you have casual Fridays, you know, and more and more business environments have become more and more casual, exactly. but, but more and more casual doesn't mean that you... Um, would allow somebody to wear shorts to work. So you want to make sure right. that you cover this. Right. And if in doubt, always ask. If you're having a question about a tire and what kinds of shoes are appropriate or, you know, what length of skirt or shorts, if they're appropriate, make sure that you ask your HR department or your manager. That's right. And, um, you know, the other things that come through, all right, which I actually do love, um, policies around being a smoke-free environment. And it's not just, um, you know, it, companies may put in their manuals even things about cannabis today. Mm -hmm. Cigarette smoking, what is tolerant, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is tolerated. If you are an organization that actually produces alcohol or mm -hmm. are one of these items, it's making sure that you have clear policies around what um, your employees can do exactly. when they're at work during normal work hours, which is... That's something a lot of employers leave out. Make yeah. sure that people know what are your standard um, work hours. Uh, a couple of other ones, snow days. Snow days. Snow days. <laughs> Sometimes uh, there are snow day policies, especially uh, for those are, who are parents in the workforce and their kids may have a snow day. You may want to consider having uh, a work from home policy. Try it. So uh, we're seeing that more and more today where there is flexibility. If you need to call in for a certain reason, if you have a sick child, if there's a snow day, um, a number of different things. If you're waiting for a contractor to come to your home and work on something, uh, perhaps you can call in and work from home. Exactly. So having clear policies. And, um, you know, the other one that, that we typically include in employee manuals is referrals. Referrals are really important when we're hiring talent. We want to know. And mm -hmm. and uh, frequently there are benefits for employees who do refer others there, right? Yeah, definitely. It, you can have very generous um, incentives around re employee referral bonuses. So um, I've seen some very generous ones. And oftentimes you'll get a really good loyal employee that way. That um, Someone that you can trust because you trust your current employees and they oftentimes know of people that would make a great match culturally for the company, too. Exactly. Yeah. Well, how about this with, um, what do we share about hiring and promotions? Well, um, I think it's important to um, outline a promotional policy uh, where, you know, employers are open to considering people internally to, to bid or to apply for a position internally before perhaps it gets posted externally. And to let people know that you are definitely uh, a pro-promotion employer. Exactly. Developing within, right? Other things that we include in our employee manuals, just so everyone knows, policies around um, hiring relatives 
And can you manage somebody who um, reports to you? That uh, excuse me, can you manage somebody who reports to you? <laughs> yes, yeah. you can. <laughs> can you manage? Yeah. Can you manage a relative <laughs> that reports to you? Um, other things that get covered, um, depending on if it's a public or private uh, company, conflicts of interest. You may also have technology that you have created that is um, something that is uh, potentially complementary to what your employer does um, produce. And the other thing is there are clear policies around who creates something and who owns it. So if you're a developer and you're working for a firm, they're going to tell you if they're paying you to build that code, they own it. Mm -hmm. And if something is discovered or created while being an employee mm -hmm. with that firm, they are going to tell you that they own that. Um, the other thing that does come forward is um, values. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of employers put elements of their values in their employee manual. So how do they do that? Well, I think a lot of times it's important for leadership to come together and then articulate and outline your values in, in meetings and make sure that you're all on the same page as far as what values you want to articulate in the company and then to put those in writing so that people know what the expectations are, what do we value, what are we like culturally as a company, and not only to put that into your handbook, but then to emphasize that on a daily basis in different ways. You know what, it's a great resource for any of your supervisors and managers. Another one that you might find surprising, but that has become so commonplace today is social media guidelines. You know, what is it that you have as expectations of your workers with regard to social media, what they put on their professional profile, mm -hmm. you know, what they share out about company, mm -hmm. business, et cetera? Exactly. You definitely want to um, have a policy that outlines that the company will not uh, tolerate defamation of the company within people's personal uh, social media and um, just outline what the expectations are as far as what you can do on work time mm -hmm. as far as your own personal social media is concerned. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that is what's really important. And, and um, I love, I'm going to go back to, to privacy. Um, in understanding privacy and what an employer has access to. And um, for employees, they might be surprised. Um, employers have access to the content that is on the resources that they have provided for mm -hmm. you. So having clarity about that in the manual does matter. Another one, mm -hmm. regardless of the industry too, it's safety. Mm -hmm. Safety matters. And um, today, even more than ever, um, safety matters. And one of the things that may be in your man manuals about safety is policies around how individuals operate or close up shop, what are procedures around that, where we might be videoing in mm -hmm. some instances, or that we require two people at all times to do certain activities. Safety has become an ever more important mm -hmm. part of employee manuals and sharing with your workers what you do around their safety and what your expectations are of them also matters because safety is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Can't just be on the employer. We need good behaviors from our employees mm -hmm. to have a safe and secure environment. Yeah, and I want to add to that that reporting procedures are so important to outline as well. If you do have an injury on the job, where do you go with that? Who do you report it to? What forms are used? All of those things should be uh, summarized in your employee handbook. As you can see, there are so many. We haven't even covered all of them. One of the things when we are working with um, different employers, we try to make sure is your employee manual needs to be an expression of you and your culture. You know, there are certain things that we're going to bring forward that at a compliance level, you really do need to pay attention to. But beyond that, it's really up to you what you choose and how far mm -hmm. you choose to go. And I can tell you we've had some employers that have employee manuals that are this thick, and we've had others that have employee manuals that are like this exactly. thick. And it really depends on what their environment, and particularly mm -hmm. employers who work with government exactly. and, and are in government and multi-state mm -hmm. because they have to deal with so many other um so many other compliance issues exactly. and those compliances, which is a great point. And if you have the union, that, that puts a whole nother layer of what gets put into your employee manual. Mm -hmm. Now, in, another one that I actually want to throw out that more and more we're doing with our employers is we are also doing an expectation letter. 
So we do an original expectation letter with um, employees. What is the difference between the expectation letter and the employee manual? I would say that the expectation letter is just a little bit more succinct and it really drill, drills down what the expectations are for the employee workforce and you as an individual, as an employee. And then we want you to be able to um, sign off on that so that we have some documentation that you've read through it and what the expectations are and that there's a mutual understanding there. Yeah, by the way, along those lines is we have employees um, when they receive it, we actually have employees sign for the employee manual, and we have them sign after there's been a review of the expectations. And part of the orientation is you make sure you walk them through expectations. Mm -hmm. And expectations can cover uh, just a multitude of things. And part of it is that you're reinforcing, depending on their role, what their responsibilities are, when they should show up to work, what our parameters are that we have expectations. That, it, that we operate where we are on time and that we focus on on-time delivery and that we do care about quality and that, that those are core expectations mm -hmm. for somebody who's in the job. And we actually encourage employers to put together expectation mm -hmm. um, letters that complement your employee manual because it makes it really clear and consistent across all of your managers and supervisors. And I would also add to review those expectations on a regular basis. Don't just do it one time. Review them on a frequent basis so that there's that ongoing understanding of what those expectations are. And you know what? At the other part on the it's a living document, you can make, uh, make those changes throughout the year when you make those changes how do you go about communicating it's really important that you let everybody know something has changed well as you mentioned you know we're in the digital age so i'd say you know via email is excellent you can have electronic sign offs on on updates and changes so i'd say uh if at all possible remain as paper free as possible that's right yeah. exactly excellent point diane so make sure that you are maintaining a current copy when you make changes notify all of your employees and then uh, what we would encourage you is at least once a year, uh, make sure that you've done a full update to your manual and your expectations mm -hmm. letter mm -hmm. and redo it with all of your workers. Have them re-review it and have them re-sign um, because things do change. Exactly. It's very organic and we're in mm -hmm. a very fast-paced environment. Right. And it shows that we care as an employer. We care about you as an employer and an employee. The relationship is very important. It is. Do you have any other closing bit of advice? Just uh, keep going with those employee manuals. Make sure you have one. If you don't have one, uh, we're always happy to help in developing that. At least start with something and then you can grow it from there. Exactly. Great point. Well, we're going to say thank you for being with us again today. Higher Results airs every Tuesday on Facebook at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Please join us next Tuesday. And if you miss a show, you can find our prior shows on eye2eyeworkforce.com. Until next Tuesday, we'll see you on the internet.